Good morning. Good morning. I'm Richard Rogers. I usually lead the Wednesday night service, and for the next two months, while River Mirage is on sabbatical, you get me twice, two shows each week, Sunday and Wednesday. So thank you for being here this morning. So our intention, our intention this morning is for you to feel the presence of God, for you to feel the presence of God within you and all around you, for you to know that you were created in the image and likeness of God, and that everywhere you look is a living expression of all that God is. So we're glad that you're here today. Absolutely, and my name is Jimmy Scott. I serve as sidekick to all of these beloved ministers. <laughs> so my pleasure to be here with you as well. Let's kick this service off this morning with our mission statement together. Unity of Phoenix, Phoenix is, is a, a loving, loving spiritual, spiritual community, community that, that welcomes, welcomes all people and honors all, all paths to God. To God. We are dedicated to transforming lives by inspiring and awakening individuals to discover God's spirit within them. And now if you will rise and join us in our opening song. So while you're still standing, why don't you turn to someone to your right or to your left and say good morning. Give them so now is our time in our service for a time of prayer and meditation. So if you have your cell phones with you, I want to encourage you to either place those on silence or vibrate. And Kristen will lead us in our meditational song. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I invite you to just allow the magnitude of those words to, to sink into your consciousness. And as you do so, I encourage you to get comfortable in your seat Release and let go of any thoughts, 
any feelings that you might be holding on to at the moment. Just completely surrender to that presence and that power that is within you. And then just allow that power to wash over you. To calm your mind down. To soothe any pain that you may be feeling in your heart. And to remove any discomfort that you may be experiencing, either physically or emotionally or spiritually. And for the next few moments, just breathe and relax. And be at peace. Be at peace with yourself and with your world. So I invite you to take a deep breath and just hold it for a few seconds. and just let it all go. On this special holiday weekend, as we are mindful of all the people in our lives, as we are mindful of all people everywhere, we envision a world filled with freedom and peace and love. And just for the ability to hold that vision in our hearts and in our minds, may we be ever so grateful. And so it is. Amen. Okay, so here's my question for today. You ready? Have you ever been in a bad relationship? Anybody? One, one lady. Thank you for your honesty, Teresa. Okay, so have you ever been in a relationship that was so bad that you wanted out? We still have hands. Okay. 
right? And I'm not just talking about at home. I could be talking about work or anywhere in your life that you've had a bad relationship that you decided wasn't for your highest and best anymore. Anybody resonate with that at all? Okay, so today I want to talk about that. Because our country was formed, was created out of a bad relationship. Is that true? We are the children of divorce. Is that true? And it's just true, right? That that we came out of a bad relationship. Our country was founded out of a bad relationship. In in July 4th, 1776, we declared our independence from a bad relationship. Let me read the preamble to our own Declaration of Independence. When through the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve a political band which has connected them with another and to assume the powers on earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. A decent respect to the opinion of mankind requires that we should declare the causes for which we are impelled to make this separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are all endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and say it with me, and the pursuit of happiness. And then in that Declaration of Independence, we then went forward and outlined 29, 27 grievances why we were making this declaration. And then everyone who signed their name to that Declaration of Independence made the decision to risk everything. They went all in. They rest their name their fortune, and the last thing they declared was their honor to be free, to move out of a bad relationship and to move into a possibility that they could create a relationship, a government that had never been created before on the planet where all people, all people, we could and would be seen as equal. That there wouldn't be a hierarchy. There wouldn't be one person in charge or a small group in charge. That there would be a, a nation where all people were perceived and understood to be equal, with equal voice, equal votes, equal opportunity. One nation under God. And so we declared our independence And because it was so important, we then had to go to war for eight and a half years against the number one superpower in the world at the time, which no one thought we could stand up against. And then at the end of that eight and a half years, we then did the most amazing thing. We then actually decided to get back into a relationship. I mean, have you ever been in a bad relationship? If you've ever been in a bad relationship, the idea of getting out of a relationship and just jumping back into one seems a little peculiar, right? Because you would think that if they just fought for this freedom, that maybe they would just say, let's just have anarchy be in charge. Or maybe we'll just let every state just go on their own way and good luck and God bless you and, and we'll just see what happens. No, but after 11 years, they, defo- they decided, they signed our Constitution. And in our Constitution, the preamble says this. September 17th, 1787. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, in order to form a more perfect union. And I want you to see this as a spiritual opportunity, as a spiritual process, that every time we declare our freedom, our independence, is a spiritual condition, that each and every one of us was given by our Creator free will, that each and every one of us is free. But in this experience of freedom, what we keep coming back to over and over again is that we want to be in great relationships. We want to create 
perfect unions. And there's something in our soul that is not satisfied and, and what calls us over and over again to something higher. Because I believe that it's a spiritual opportunity. There's something spiritual here. And it is each one of us was created to be free. That the moment God created each one of us, we were given free will. That we have freedom to make whatever choice we want. We have complete, total free will. And yet, our soul wants to know relationship. We want to know connection. We want to know what it's like to be at the next highest level of life. And I believe that this all comes back to the beginning. In the beginning when God gave us free will. See, the thing about free will is so important that if God didn't give us free will, then the whole spiritual process of choosing God becomes a mute point. See, if your soul doesn't have free will, then you'd have to choose God. But because you have free will, choosing God over and over and over again becomes more and more meaningful because you're actually making the choice. You're using your free will, and you're deciding that you want to move your free will in the direction of God, that you want to have a relationship with God, that you want your relationship with God to be the most important thing, and that every relationship comes out of our relationship with God. When we're in resistance to our relationship with God, it shows up over and over again all around us. And that as we become the, make that conscious choice to put God first in our lives, every relationship begins to go through a time of transformation. So the question that I have for you today, are you willing to look at areas in your life where your soul is calling you to a more perfect union? Are you willing to look at those relationships in your life that maybe you've been letting slide and your soul knows it's time for more perfect unions? Because we, there is an opportunity here that to truly know your freedom is in relationship with something, with so, uh, something else. See, have you been watching the news lately? In the news this weekend especially, there's been a lot of talk about our, our treaty or our potential treaty with Iran. You know about this? This idea that there's a treaty at work so that the, the, the Iran government will give up their nukes or their potential nukes for, in this treaty. So for the last six weeks, we've been in constant daily negotiation with the Iranian government on creating a treaty that they'd be willing to give up this stuff, right? Now, this weekend, the president announced that they had reached a certain level of negotiation to create a framework that, so that it made sense to move forward toward this treaty. Now, what's amazing about that, whether you read this, that stuff or not, what's amazing about this is when President Obama got on the news and announced that, in Iran, our enemy for 40 years. Iran was our enemy for 40 years. There were no talks with Iran for the last 40 years until the last 18 months. And in the last six weeks, they've been constant talks at the highest level of our cabinet with their cabinet to come up with a solution to see if we can move beyond them creating another nuclear superpower, at least a nuclear power in the Middle East, because we all felt that that wasn't a good idea. Can I get an amen from the house? All right. So President Obama goes up and he makes a speech. Do you know what the number one thing on Twitter this week in Iran has been? You probably don't. Right? The number one thing on Twitter this week in Iran is people taking selfies of themselves watching the speech that Obama gave. The number one thing is people want pictures of themselves, the Iranian people taking pictures and selfies of themselves while Obama was giving the speech on TV because it's been the first time in years that American president's speech has been televised in Iran. What I want you to hear is the world wants a more perfect relationship with our nation. Now, sometimes it's hard for us to understand that. We think sometimes we get in the mindset that the world's actually at war with us. But what I want you to see is over and over again, the world wants a more perfect 
relationship with us. And the evidence is astounding. And then because of that, the requirement of all of us, and especially of our government, is that we function at the highest level of integrity to actually support those kind of relationships being built because our country was dedicated to relationships becoming more and more perfect. Because the world wants to be our friend. The world wants to be our friend. So today, I'm going to invite you to look. Is there any area in your life that Spirit, God, is calling you to perfect a relationship? Do you have a relationship, maybe at work or at home with family or friends, maybe a neighbor that you've allowed to slide? Today, would you be willing to look at Allowing at least one relationship to become greater than it's ever been before. And I want to give you five points today that allow us to really perfect those relationships that we want to perfect in our life. The first one, you ready? Is free. See, the thing about relationships is that we can't have great relationships until we understand fully and completely that each and every one of us is free. Right? We, we kind of sometimes, have you ever wanted to kind of just slightly control or manipulate somebody in your life to get them to behave the way you wanted them to? Have you ever looked at somebody maybe as a fixer-up project that if you just put a new carpet and cabinets in them that they'd be like just a little bit more socially acceptable? Right? <laughs> Right? And what I want you to see today is that the first premise of having really great relationship is that everybody's free. Not only are you free, you're 100% free because God gave you free will. Everybody is 100% free. Will you say that with me? I am 100% free. Together, I am 100% free. Say it just like we're excited about that, will you? I am 100% free. So in every relationship, in every situation, you are 100% free. Now, What our ego tells us over and over again is that we're being victimized by them, by their behavior, their choices, their attitude, their whatever it is. Over and over again, we believe that we're being victimized by how they're showing up. And what I want you to see over and over again is that you're making the choice. You're making the choice to be there because you are, let's say together, 100% free. Every one of us is 100% free. Now, but I don't like the way they're showing up. And I'd really wish they changed their act. Okay, how's that working for you? Right? Because every one of us is together 100% free. Every one of us, if God gave us freedom, then we are 100% free. 100% free. And that every relationship, every relationship has to start from this idea that we are 100% free. Not just me, but everybody. Two, the, most, the second most important thing in relationship is acceptance, right? And acceptance is kind of interesting because we want to accept some and not accept all, right? We want to receive some of who they are, and frankly, we would like to leave some of who they are over there for somebody else to deal with, right? But if you're really going to be in relationship, if you're going to allow relationships to go to the next level, if they're truly going to be perfected, then we really have to look at and acknowledge that we have to accept all, Because we'd like just to accept the good parts, the parts that we think are socially acceptable, but we actually have to learn to accept all the parts, all the ways they show up, to fully accept all of who they are. And, And we cannot have the next level of relationship until we accept all of them. Can you think of one person in your life that you think is just wonderful if they would just do this, this, and this? Can you think of somebody in your life that you'd really like to have more of a relationship if they would just change this, this, and this, right? So again, how's that working for you, right? So the number one thing is freedom. 
The next thing is full acceptance, not only of yourself, but of all people. You have to accept that everybody has free will to show up just the way they choose to show up. Well, they shouldn't show up that way. Okay, well, good luck. <laughs> they get to show up any way they choose. Freedom, acceptance. The third one is I want you to write down the word speak. Because we can't get to the next level of perfect relationship without speaking more of the truth of who we are. So how did we get to a negotiation with Iran? You know how we did it? We put a group of people at one side of a table and we made them sit there for six weeks and talk to a group of people on the other side of the table. And they actually had to talk to each other. That we can't create perfect relationships. We can't create greater relationships unless we're willing to share what the highest and the best that we desire and to be willing to listen to what somebody else shares as the highest and the best that they desire. That the only way we can create greater and greater relationships is when we both share, talk, speak, use our words, and listen when other people are using their words. Right? Right? And sometimes using our words is the scariest thing in the world. Have you ever, can you think of a relationship where you didn't use and you didn't tell the whole story? Can you think of a time when you didn't share the whole truth? Would you be willing to move to a higher level of communication because if you don't share, how are they going to know? It's not written down anywhere. They're not as psychic as you would like them to be. They can't figure it out unless you're speaking. So what is it that you need to say? What is the truth that you haven't had the courage to speak? So one is freedom. Two is acceptance, three is speaking, and four is love. Now, I know we always want to start with love, right? Because we just, we're taught that. Start with love and everything else will work out. Have you ever, ever gotten into a relationship that way? Well, we just love each other so much. You know, there's just happiness and rainbows everywhere, and we just, we love each other so much. But I want you to see that after you get to number, after you do the first three, after you celebrate each other's freedom, after you accept each other for who you are completely, and after you tell the truth completely, then it's appropriate to love and to love fully because you actually know who they are. Like we want to get to love before we've done the inner work. We want to get to love because we think love's enough to fix everything. And what I want you to say is you can't really love somebody if you don't know who they are. If you can't love them unconditionally, you don't just get to love the good parts. You have to love all of them. And if you haven't listened long enough, if we haven't told the truth about who we are, if we haven't really accepted each other fully, and if we haven't really allowed one another to be free, then when we get to love, we kind of do it superficially instead of going all the way. So who in your life have you been loving who you wanted them to be instead of loving who they really are? Because there's a difference, and that difference changes everything. And five, forgiveness. Because even though we're trying to perfect each and every relationship, there's going to be a time when your heart gets bumped, when it hurts, when somebody does something or says something, and it hurts your feelings. And without forgiveness, there's no place to go. There's no room to move. And it's all about forgiveness. See, today is July 5th. Did you know that? Today's July 5th. See, on July 4th, we celebrate our independence. 
And in this country, we celebrate our independence in a very big way. We blow stuff up. We, we just, we celebrate it in a very big way, right? That, that we are so willing to celebrate our independence over and over again. But July 5th is different. Because once we've celebrated our independence, July 5th is about going back to work. And the work that we've decided to do as a country is to build more perfect unions within our country, within our relationships, and within our world. And the thing about building more perfect unions is there's always a better job you can do. There's always more God to experience in relationship with others. So I 100% this weekend want you to declare your independence, to celebrate your independence. But I also want you to look in the relationships in your life and say, we're going to have more perfect unions. Will you pray with me? And I invite you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to the activity of God that is right here, right now. And we turn our full focus and attention on God. We allow that living spirit and power of God that's within us to become the most important thing in our life. That there is only one presence and one power. And we deepen our own relationship with God that we may feel the presence of God within us, that we may have a great relationship with our God. And then we look around her, and we see all the relationships that we're having with the multitude of people around us. And it's like, God, show us how we can have more perfect relationships, more perfect unions, more perfect connections with the people around us. That we are created in the image and in your likeness. And today we take the next step in creating a world that glorifies God in all things. And so it is. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great weekend. Didn't she do a great job? Kirsten did such a great job. Guys, fabulous. Great music today. We are so excited. Thank you, guys. All right. Did you have a good Sunday? All right. Ready for a good week? So who's free? I am, and so is everybody else. And we are here to build more perfect unions with life. You ready? So thanks for being here. Okay, so Reverend Tina is upstairs working with the kids. So uh, my first Sunday here, they've left me alone with the children. <laughs> hey guys, how are you? Good. Good. How, how was your 4th of July? Anybody have go to 4th of July? My sister did. Your sister did? <laughs> did she enjoy it? Did anybody see any fireworks? Yeah. On TV or in person? Yeah. Do everybody have all their fingers and toes? I know, how fun is that? They let us blow things up. Is that a crazy thing to do during a holiday or what? So did you all, so you know what we celebrate at 4th of July? You said it, Sebastian. What'd you say? I said that usually on the 4th of July, Sunday school, we're like doing fireworks on the lake. I know, sometimes, right? But you know what we celebrate on the 4th of July? How, no, not fireworks. Sebastian, independence. That's why we call it Independence Day, because that's where our country started. It was on July 4th, 1776, that we became a country. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So cool. And so you know what? If our country is independent, what does that mean about us? We're independent. Is that great or what? Okay, so we are going to bless you. Do you, are you ready to be blessed? Prepare yourself because you're about to be blessed. All right, let's put the affirmation up there. Let's say it together. You guys ready? Here we go. You are a perfect child of God. God and I love you just the way you are. That was fabulous. Could you feel the blessing? 
No, stay right here for a minute. I, I forgot my chaplains. Will all my chaplains stand quickly? Look around. These wonderful chaplains are here to hold us in prayer. So if you need prayer support today, the chaplains are here to love you and to support you, and we want to thank the chaplains for serving in this way. Okay, kids, guess what your part is now? You're going to join us as we affirm together our prayer for protection. Have you memorized it? Are you going to, you going to hold the mic? You ready? Let's say it together. Help them. Here we go. Together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God. We did so good. Yay for us. All right. Well, everybody stand together as we sing together our song of peace. God bless you all and have a wonderful Independence Weekend.